Hello Cherries fans, well the next new signing looks imminent for AFC Bournemouth. Just a few days ago of course Cherries confirmed that they had bought Roman Favre from Lyon only to be loaned back to FC Lorient where he was having a loan spell last season. A lot of Cherries fans seem perplexed by that one. We're buying a player then we're loaning him back. But before we've even had the chance to ruminate over that one, it seems we're at it again. And this time, it's another player from the continent that looks to be arriving at Dean Court soon. And it's Milos Kerkes, a player that's been at AC Milan, but more substantially at AZ Alkmaar in the Eredivisie. He's 19. He's left back, he plays for Hungary, and by the sounds of it, he's pretty exciting too. So, to chat more about this, we have got Ben Boschiak with us. Ben, how are you doing, sir? You all right? Yeah, I'm very well. Great to be on. Thank you for having me on. So, let's talk a little bit about you first. You've you've written for the, for the Guardian, World Soccer Mag for Goal, for the Daily Mirror, but more importantly... You're born in Hungary, right? So it's uh, fair to say that you're the brain of Hungarian football. Is that right? I wouldn't go that far, but uh, I, you know, I, I do know a fair bit about Hungarian football just because I grew up there. I mean, only until I was 10, but I've, I've followed uh, Hungarian football ever since I moved to the UK as well. And uh, I definitely know a fair bit about Milos. I've followed his career uh, a lot. I've interviewed him uh, in the past and uh Yes, yeah, so I know a fair bit about him. Yeah, and you also write for Liverpool.com as well. So it's fair to say that you've probably been asked to speak quite a lot recently about Dominic Sobersley. Is that right? Yeah, that's true. I've been everywhere. Uh, so, you know, it's good though. I mean, I'm enjoying this. Uh, you know, more Hungarians coming to the Premier League. It's, it's, it's a good time to be a Hungarian football fan for sure. And uh, yeah, it's, it's exciting. And I think I'm really excited about Milos as well. I think he's going to do really well at Bournemouth. And uh yeah, I think he's going to be a fan favourite. I've been looking through Twitter and the way it organises the two columns. You've got the feed that's for you, but then also just a feed that Twitter thinks is for you. But every time I go onto that, it seems that the football world, not just Bournemouth fans, is united in thinking that this is a this is a big signing for AFC Bournemouth. Would they be right? I think so. I think, you know, you have to, like, just look at the bigger picture about the clubs that were in for him at the start of the window, like the likes of Benfica, Lazio, these are, you know, teams who are competing in Europe. And the fact that in the end, it's Bournemouth that won the race to sign him is a big statement signing in in, in itself, I think. Yeah, the fee's £14 million by the looks of it, plus £1.5 million in add-ons. But Lazio, Champions League football, I mean, why would a player choose Bournemouth over Lazio? I mean, I think probably for me, when I spoke to Milos, one of the things that stood out for me, and I posted about this as well, is I asked him, you know, where would he like to be in the future? What kind of football does he like? And and he mentioned the Spanish football style, that that was his favourite. That's what stood out to him. So obviously Bournemouth's new manager, uh, that would have, I, I imagine had an influence having come from that Spanish background, being Spanish as well. Um, I think probably that's a key factor in his decision because he do, he did say that he loves that style, he loves that Spanish football, the intensity of it, uh, the technical aspects of it as well. Mm. Uh, so I think that's that's the thing that stands out for me and which might have had a motivation behind his decision. So speaking as a Liverpool.com writer, you, you might know a, a fair bit about Gary O'Neill because he was youth team coach there. But as far as it is his management at Bournemouth could be looked at, whilst on the surface, a lot of fans initially, after his dismissal, they thought it was fairly questionable. But does this signing of Milos perhaps indicate that the club are trying to push to the next level and maybe that can make the dismissal of... O'Neill and the arrival of Iriola, you know, it can make it worthwhile. Yeah, I think so. I mean, like you said, I was kind of disappointed when I first saw the news about Gary O'Neill. I'm sure all Bournemouth fans were as well. I mean, he seems to have done a good job at Bournemouth and I think he deserved to stay. But obviously, Bournemouth are trying to build, I think, something special right now, it seems like. And Iriola is someone who has a really good record in Spain and mm. really seems like a top manager. And uh, obviously, sometimes I think you have to be ruthless in, in, in football and in this business. And uh, 
it, it seems like it was one of those that, you know, it, they chose sort of cold, harsh facts over mm. sentiments. Mm, yeah. So as far as his footballing career goes so far, he's he's played about 60 games domestically. He's been in the Conference League. He's also played for his national team too. Now, I gather his mum is Serbian, but... He chose Hungary to play for, and it sounds like it was a decision that was made like almost down to the support he received from the coaching staff there. Would that be accurate? Um, so actually, it's, it's kind of a long story, but his grandmother is the Hungarian. Mm. He, was, he grew up and was born in Serbia, but he came to Hungary as a teenager at a young age and was spotted by at Dürr, uh, after playing at Austria, Vienna's academy, and uh, the Hungarian coaching staff are always looking at, you know, who could we bring in because we're a small country and yeah. they're looking at sort of, you know, who has Hungarian relatives where and the, they found out that Milos was eligible and from a young age he's played in Hungary's youth groups as a result and uh, I think because of that loyalty decided to represent Hungary rather than Serbia even though he's probably good enough to play for Serbia and you know at the time when he did make that decision Serbia was probably the better nation to choose mm. just in terms of you know having qualified for the World Cup I mean he could have easily potentially been in that squad given the way he performed at Aizad Alkmaar at the start of the season so yeah it was a Big decision for him, but as a Hungarian, I'm obviously glad that he, he chose Hungary. He was the first choice left back under Pascal Janssen, wasn't he? He played over 200, sorry, 2,500 minutes over four competitions, and his output for that period as well was five goals and nine assists. So it's fair to say he gets forward a bit. What what kind of player is Milos? Is he, is he a left back? Is he left wing back? What's his style? I think... Um, both really uh, I think defensively he's, he's very aggressive and uh, I think fans will like that I think that will suit him in the Premier League as well in terms of you know how physical he can yeah. be and you know he's, he, he might he might not necessarily be the tallest player you know I think he's around 180 175 between that sort of figure uh, but he really he really puts his foot in and then he gets some big tackles in and I think that's why he's like the Alkmaar fans really loved him as well uh, in terms of going forward he's he's fast he's technically gifted he, he's really good when it comes to just bringing the ball forward at his feet he's very good at dribbling and he's he's got a good shot on him good cross one I think when I spoke to him the thing that he said he needed to improve on is his crossing and I think I have seen an improvement since then in his ability to cross. And, you know, I think his output for Aizel Alkmaar shows that as well. Superb. That's really good. Well, of course, we know that he's he's played for Hungary. Oh, do I have to talk about it? Yeah, I'm going to have to. The fact that you beat us twice in what the space of a, of a fortnight, it was a it was a one nil then a four nil on our own turf and he was on the bench then but he made his his first senior national team appearance in the September of last year against Germany of course the Hungarian national side managed by Marco Rossi and I gather that he might have had some input over the move because it seems like the national team players by the looks of it they seem to always talk through their potential moves and uh, see whether he's of agreement with it um I don't know if he, they had a word but I'm sure Marco Rossi will be pleased that he's joined the Premier League side and a good Premier League side, a promising Premier League side in that. And I think um, in that sense, it's, it's going to be a boost for the national team for sure, especially, you know, I think in terms of Milos' development to, to be in the Premier League and to come up against some of the, the best wingers in world football is, is going to benefit him. I remember when I spoke to him before Hungary played Germany and that was going to be his... I think first game for Hungary and he was talking about the prospects of you know facing the likes of Leroy Sane and Serge Gnabry and how he was mm. looking forward to that and I think he's relishing now the prospect of coming up against you know even better players and uh, that's I think that's something I want to highlight about Milos as well is his mentality right. uh, you know having spoken to him and just having seen him on the pitch he's He's so fearless. He's so confident in himself. And, you know, not, not even in a cocky way. I think he just really believes in himself. And he has that attitude that, you know, even when he has a setback, he, he'll he he'll overcome that and, and he'll, he'll come out as a better player. And I think 
his determination and, and, and the way he just isn't faced by anything is, is something that is going to, you know, help him in his career long term as well. Can he can he take a free kick? Because Bournemouth at the moment have got a bit of a dearth of free kick takers. We've probably only got Philip Billing, but does he take many set pieces? I haven't really seen him not for Isaac Alkmaar or for Hungary, but, you know, given he's trying to improve his crossing, who knows, you know, mm. potentially he could. I think from the left side, probably, if you're looking for someone to whip it in, I think he could potentially be a candidate for that. Do you think... Um... In terms of Hungarian football, obviously at the moment there's a there's a bit of a renaissance at the moment. And it seems like the culture's changed over the last sort of 10, 15 years or so with more foreign coaches and the style of play seems to have changed. A lot of one touch moving together as a unit, covering each other. Is there, is there high hopes for you in Hungarian football? I think so, you know, I think... Uh... The last Euros was very unfortunate that Hungary were drawn against mm. uh, Germany, France and Portugal. And, you know, they were only 10 minutes away from qualifying out of that group of death. Uh, had it not been for a late Leon Goretzka equaliser, uh, they could have done it. And I think now the hope is that given that the group that we're in for the Euro qualification, uh, competing with Serbia, there's a genuine possibility that little, that Hungary will qualify for the the Euros and they could do well there as well. I think if, you know, if they finish as the top in their group, they could be favourably seeded and then, you know, hopefully avoid a similar situation to, to, to the last European Championships. But I think, you know, the bigger goal is, is the World Cup in 2026. And I think uh, the hope is that, you know, we mentioned Soboslai, who's the captain and, and, I would put Kerkas as the second biggest Hungarian talent behind wow. Soboslai. Uh, so, you know, the hope is that those two can help uh, Hungary get to, to that long, long coveted World Cup. We're, we're taking to the continent a lot to find uh, a lot of our acquisitions at the moment, it seems. And with Iriola, we've got a manager that can speak English, can speak obviously Spanish as well, his native language. Um, can Milos speak English or is his English any good? Oh, I spoke to him in English, yeah. He's, oh, cool. uh, he's Hungarian is the one that is improving gradually. He, he wasn't necessarily perfect, but he keeps learning and learning and is getting better in Hungarian. But English is, is the language that he feels probably most comfortable in, yeah, in, in terms of a foreign language. And uh, yeah, you, he'll, he'll be able to settle in perfectly fine in, in terms of his English. It, it's, it's perfect, you know. When I spoke to him, it was very good. So if I was to say... You have to forgive me here. If I was to say Udver Soik Bournemouth Bon, would that would that be accurate? Welcome, Milos Kerkes. Udver Close Soik. enough. I'll, I'll take it. I'll take it. Yeah. I've, Close enough. I've given it a good go. Uh, ben, look, it's been fantastic to have you here. Um, we're really interested to see uh, how Milos develops for AFC Bournemouth. Um, just once again, remind viewers whereabouts they can see and read your work. Uh, just on Twitter at Ben Bocek. Uh you can find me tweeting about Milos I tweeted about him all the way through last season you can probably find out the interview that I did for him with him for sorry for scouted football as well I think that kind of charts his whole career from being at AC Milan scoring for their first team in pre-season to you know eventually ending up at AZ Alkmaar and uh, playing for the Hungarian national team as well and, and I think uh, that that will give you even more of an insight into how he ended up at Bournemouth. It's incredible. It sounds like he gives 250%. He never stops running, tracking back if his man's got past him. High accuracy tackles, large sticks uh, tackles. He likes to get up the pitch and have a shot on goal. I think we're going to win the league, lads. You never know. You never know. But no, we'll certainly be more competitive this season. Ben, it's been an absolutely great pleasure to have you on. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah, great to speak to Ben there about uh, Milos Kerkes, who is imminently arriving. He'll be having his medical this week before being unveiled. Bournemouth also have been linked recently as well with uh, Real Valladolid star Ivan Freshnader as well. So if we can get him over the line as well, these are just early links at this stage. Of course, the Alex Scott rumblings go on. It looks like at the moment... It's us versus Wolves with bids being rejected all over the place. Bristol City holding out for their 25 million. Will he be coming 
To Molyneux or Vitality Stadium, all remains to be seen. Elsewhere on the AFC Bournemouth News radar this morning, the away kit was released and it's all about the waves. What are your thoughts on the kit? Look, I put out a tweet this morning to ask you to score it out of 10. It's fair to say it's actually quite a, a divisive kit. I think it's one of these that will need to be looked at in the flesh. I remember the home shirt when it was launched last year. I really wasn't a fan. But then when I saw it in the club shop and while I was wearing it, I thought, actually, this is quite nice. And I've got a feeling it could be one of them. There were a few people complaining that the pattern wasn't uh, extending on to the sleeve as well. But for me, I don't know. I could be convinced. I think I'll need to see it in the flesh. But yeah, the AFC Bournemouth new away kit is out, as well as the goalkeeper's kit. And then all we're waiting for then is the third kit. So it'll be really interesting to see when we play Southampton, for instance, what kit will we be sporting? Will we be playing in the away one or will it be the third kit? That might be out around then. It's been revealed that we will be playing in the away kit against Liverpool. So, yeah, really looking forward to seeing our players sporting that this morning. There was probably a mass scrabble around 10am to see our second home league game of the season, right? Were you one of them? I certainly was. I was on at 10am, logged on. Practically all the tickets looked as though they'd gone when I logged on. Don't know what's happening, but managed to secure the Spurs ticket. So well done if you got one. I've got a feeling this is one of them that may just go to one point drop, probably not further than that. So yeah, it's been a busy old week so far at AFC Bournemouth and I've got a feeling it will only get busier. Remember, if you haven't subscribed, well, what are you doing? Just press the subscribe button. Also like this video, it truly helps. We're going to be posting videos when anything new happens. So hit the bell and we'll send you an alert when it's on. Until the next video, up the cherries.